Hi guys, my name is Jen and I create crafts. In today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how to create these awesome koozies, uh, telling you step-by-step -step how to create these. These were so much fun to do and they are a big, big seller. And I'm gonna to talk to you about that more in this video, so let's get started. All right, crafters, so starting in Design Space, these are the SVG file images that I'm going to be using. I either purchase them from Design Bundles or I purchase them from Etsy. Those are my two go-to uh, to find them. So you can find them anywhere. You can go on Google and find them that way. Um, but that's my two go-tos is Etsy and Design Bundles. So I thought these would be really fun to do. To be honest with you, I've... Whoops, I'm hiding one behind it. I have... I'm hiding a few of them behind there. <laughs> I have never done one like this before, this whole image here. So you are going to learn with me how to do this. This is really uh, interesting how it's so full and vibrant like this. So you're going to learn with me how to do these. I didn't see these other ones uh, hiding behind it. Um, so you can see there's kind of a theme going on here. I sell uh, my koozies and all of my other crafts at two consignment stores. And then I'm also really looking forward to selling my stuff at craft flea markets stuff again this spring and summer. Stay along with me. I will show you everything, how to set up, how I did, give you the full details on everything. So you want to hit that subscribe button if you're not subscribed already, because I do make a lot of money on uh, several things that I make. One of them is my koozies in the summertime and the other one is my keychains but my number one uh, thing that I sell is my uh, egg cartons if you haven't seen that stay tuned I will leave a link in the description uh, down below uh, showing you how to create those and what they look like so the only thing with these that I have to do is resize them and there's really nothing else that I have to do except for make sure that they're changed to print then cut and then resize them so the koozies that I have, I just purchased all of them on Amazon. Um, I purchased a hundred pack of multiple variety of colors. And then I also have just regular white ones that I'm going to be putting this on. I can't tell you what size to use. The way that I do it for me is I put my koozie on a mat and I look that way to see how big it is. That's just the way I do it. It makes it really simple and easy to do. So the way I figured mine were, um, so my white ones are a little bit bigger than the colorful ones. So these ones I think I'm gonna keep just the way that they look and then this guy I'm gonna make a little bit bigger. So for mine, it's going to be, whoops, there it is, a 3.2. That's what size fits for me. So I'm just going to change all these to be the 3.2. So it's it's anything under uh, 3.5 by 3.5. So whatever works for you is might be different than mine. So the way that I do it is I'm going to leave it locked up here, but I'm going to change this to be 3.2, and then it's automatically going to change the height for me if you saw it there. So I'll do this one really quick and show you. I am not unlocking it. I'm just changing it to 3.2 is what I wanted at, and it's automatically going to change the height for me. If I unlocked it and changed it to be 3.2 by 3.2, well, I will show you. It, it will not look right. So this is what it looks like right now. If I unlock this and I put it to be 3.2, watch this. It's not as bad, but it is skewed a little bit. So I don't like the way that looks. So I always keep it locked up there and then um, let it figure out for me the height that it's supposed to be. So I just pushed the back button so it, it went on back to where I wanted it. Anything under, you know, the three and a half by three and a half. So I'm just cutting it right here. Then this one I want to make sure, nope, way too big. So again, I'm just going to change it 3.2 and then let it automatically change the height for me. And then this last one down here, let's figure this one out, the 3.2. And then if you wanted to change the color on these, you can change the color. Um, some of them are kind of harder to get to. Like this one, it, it looks like it says original artwork here. So what you can do is actually go up to operation up here and change it to uh, basic. And that will let you get to the color. So let's say I wanted to do this one yellow. I can do that, but you want to make sure you go back up here and you want to do print then cut. It's going to stay the yellow color, but you want to make sure that you change um, 
it back to the print then cut. So again, same thing, it's print and cut. You can't change the color here because it says that. You just wanna go to a basic and you can change it to whatever color you want. So let's say I want this one brown, just like that. So I'm gonna just hit the back button a few times because I wanna keep these black the way that they are. And then I change this one already to a different color. So again, all you gotta do is resize, and make sure it says print then cut, and then you can go to make it. So for this one, I'm going to leave it a little bit bigger um, than the 3.2 because I want it to overlap on my koozie. Nope, gotta take that part out. So I'm just gonna change this one to be the 3.2 and then let it automatically change the width and the height for me right here. Um, so I've never done anything this full before that takes up the whole space of it. So we're gonna see together what this looks like. So I always like to go in here and check that it says, you can see up here right here, that each one of them say print then cut. Oh, see, missed that one. So I'm gonna go in here, print, then cut. You can see it changes it and looks a little bit different too. But I always like to double check and click on every single one to make sure that that's what they say. Next, after you change the color and you change the sizing, you just wanna go to, whoops, sorry. Wanna go to make it and then you send it to your printer. So you're using a sublimation printer that you set up with the subbing ink and you wanna use the subbing paper. The only other thing that I do on here is just move this down a little bit and move this to the side a little bit just so I can get my scissors in here. You're not going to need your Cricut machine with this. You will see register lines on here when it prints out. You just wanna make sure you cut those away. So that's the only thing I do on here. Actually, one more thing, I click the mirror button. So with anything like HTV, uh, heat transfer vinyl, or like this, you always Want to mirror your image so i'm going to do the same thing with this one just push it down a little bit and push the mirror button again the last one unfortunately with design space i don't know why they do it but they don't let you like put them out like if i wanted to put oh i suppose that one would fit but it's a little close here i like having a little bit of extra paper i think and i need to work with it so if you guys are um kind of knowledgeable if you guys are knowledgeable about this let me know but i think you can do this in canva and you can print out the whole uh eight by 12 piece of paper that you have i'm not sure i'm just getting started with this so this is how i do it i just save this paper right here i'm just going to take the scissors and cut this paper so i have the rest of this and then i'll use it for another project somehow so again i could probably put another one of these right here but i'm just going to leave it the way it is for the purposes of the video i'm going to go to continue and i'm just going to send it to my printer it's as easy as that so it says send to printer i'm going to choose the printer i use so i have this one i have the let's see equitank 2803 and i absolutely love it so you can see the <clears throat> excuse me you can see that the mirror's on and i always take off the bleed here and then i'm just going to go ahead and push print and it's gonna send it to the printer for me. I'm gonna do the same thing on these as well. So I'm gonna skip and do this one. So I have that one. I'm gonna send it to printer, see it here. Again, click my printer that I'm using, turn the ad bleed off, print it. So it's printing for me now. I'm gonna get set up at my uh, heat press. I'm gonna talk a little bit about my heat press and then show you what they look like and how to create these um, koozies. These are awesome. I cannot wait to show you the finished product. All right, so I'm at my heat press and I have all my stuff ready. So here's my new heat press that I'm going to be talking about really quickly. This is the HTV Rond heat press. Over here is my old one. Um, I love this heat press. I'm not getting rid of it. But this one has a couple neat features that I really love about it. So first of all, it has this pull-out drawer here. And then second of all, it's automatic. So once you close this drawer, it will automatically go down. If you have an issue, you just push a little R on here and you make it go back up. Really easy to use, no pressure that you have to worry about. It automatically does the pressure for you. And it has an uh, awesome little timer button on here. You can push the time button, plus and minus. You can push the temperature button here and do the plus and minus. Really awesome, so when the R turns green, it means it's ready. So I have my heat press set at 400 degrees for 35 seconds. I have my images here, so I'm gonna show you these really quick. So this is the images that I cut or printed out on my printer. And you can see that it has a register mark around the edge. That is because of Cricut. I was not putting this in through Cricut to cut it out. I'm just going to take the scissors and cut them out. Um, I've already cut one of them out here. So I cut this. You want to make sure you cut the register lines away from there. So I'm going to be using this one first. And you can always see from the back way which way it goes. Um, so you don't put it upside down. I've done it many times where I thought I had it... Um, right side up and I actually did it upside down. So you always want to make sure um, that you're putting it on properly. So here are my white koozies and actually um, 
I had some stuff come up, so I wasn't able to finish this project uh, on video on time. So I actually have these white ones. And I, in the meantime of me doing this video, the first part of it, and he, pressing it now, I had the time to order some new koozies. So not only do I have the white koozies, but I have colored ones. And you can see here, this is why I said it's important, that koozies are different sizes. So you can see on the edge here, there's a little bit bigger of... The white one is a lot bigger than the colored one. So you always want to make sure that if you're watching somebody's video and they say, oh, your koozie is 3x3 three three or 6x6, six six, whatever it could be, you need to measure your own so that you make sure that you have the right size. Very, very important. So really the only thing you have to do is, like I said, you can flip it over. <clears throat> you can see that it says it there. So what I like to do is kind of work backwards, I guess. So this is where it comes in handy where you make your image a little bit larger that you can see all around it. And I'm just going to take some heat tape that I have here. This is really not necessary to do this, but I just want to show you guys you can put heat tape on here um, to make it stay in place. Uh, normally, with bigger ones like the koozies, I don't worry about taping this. I just, <clears throat> I just put it down in one spot. So you can use heat tape and put it around the side so it stays in the spot. And then when you're done, you want to make sure you flip your image so your image is right side up, so it's facing up towards the heat. So I'm going to just take another one really quick. So I have a blue koozie, and I'm just going to find one here and cut this one out too really quick. Again, like I said, you want to get rid of the, the lines on the side because those will go on anything because any color will go on here as if you can see this if you can see all this I kind of made the mistake of doing that so I have it all over here but it's not going to ruin anything with this so here's the next one again I like to flip it over so you can see what it says and then you want to just take it and this one's a little bit smaller so I'm going to take my time trying to find the center of this I can see the image on the back and I can kind of gauge where the edges are here and I want to make sure it's going to fit on the top and the bottom. So very important that you want to make this really straight and then now is when the heat tape comes in really handy because now I can just put it on the side because it's not that big of an image. So just like this, so then the image is not going to move. So just like that, two of them are done. Next thing you wanna do is just take a piece of parchment paper or Teflon paper and lay it on the top to protect it. So I'm gonna pull this out all the way. Then I have the two on here. And then again, like I said, all I gotta do is watch this. That's it, it's automatically, sorry about that. It's automatically telling me um, that it's working, the pressure, I don't have to worry about it with this one. I'd always have to gauge and do the pressure on that, push down really hard. This one, I don't have to do anything, just watch it count down. And that is it. This thing is really awesome. I love this thing. So other things you're going to need are some gloves because this is going to be hot when you are um, done with this. So the heat tape comes in really handy. I'll leave a description down below. This heat um, container is really awesome. It comes in handy. Once it's done, it will automatically lift up. So I'm not saying that you should ever leave your heat press, but for whatever reason, if you have kids and they're crying for you or you've got somebody at the door, this will automatically go up, and after a certain amount of time, this will shut off. So not at all am I saying, hey, go leave your heat press. You always want to stay by it when you have it on, but just in case, that's a nice feature that they have. So I'm going to take that off. I'm not going to worry about the gloves. You should have gloves on for this, but I'm just going to show you. So I'm going to take this off. And there it is, just like that. It is a little bit off on the side here, but I figure once you put a beer can in or a soda can, you're not really going to tell. So there's the first one there, the colored one. And then here is the full color one that I was really kind of worried about because I'd never used a full color before. So we're going to see what this looks like together. I'm going to take this tape off. And again, this is hot, so you should wear gloves, but I'm not going to put them on for now. Ready? Ready for the reveal? I've never done this before. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Dad. That is really cool. I love it. So it went down far enough on here, so if you have something in here, you're not going to see the edge on there just like that. And you can actually go around and do the back too, but I like that. That is a full image there. That looks really awesome. So I'm going to continue to keep doing these. 
Um, I have all these left here, but you're just going to want to do the same thing. Cut around your uh, image here and then use your heat tape and put it on there. So this is done. You can kind of tell that this is done. There's really no color on it left, so you want to put that to the side and not make sure you don't use it again. You'll see on some of them that it does have color left. That's just where your heat did not touch um, your fabric, so that's why you might have le that left. So I'm going to go ahead and finish some more of these up, and then I'll show you what they look like when they're finished, and I'll put something inside of it so it kind of shows you off, shows off what it looks like. But overall, I'm very happy with this. Leave a like down below if you like this video. Hit that subscribe button if you guys are not subscribers of mine already. I'm going to be doing a lot more crafting coming up, and you do not, do not want to miss because I do craft shows. I sell it consignment stores and I do really well and I'm willing to give you guys all my tips and tricks. I actually have an ebook for sale as well. I will leave that down in the description below. All the funds go towards this channel for me to keep doing awesome videos for you guys. So help me and let me know you appreciate me and love these videos. So stay tuned to see what this looks like, but please do hit that subscribe button and that like button down below. So I hope this video really helped you out. This is what they look like. And to do this with this part in here, I just cut out this with a piece of cardstock and then you just stick it in here. And basically it helps you hang it here and it also keeps it um, nice and flat like this as you can see. So if you want to hang it and you put it in a store or something to sell it, you could do it like that. Just a piece of cardstock, really not that hard to do. And then I also have a stack here. So I wanted to show you guys, I do sell these at craft stores. So I have it here. I just have a little tag on the edge here. I put my number on it. I put the description of it and then I sell it. So these are very good sellers for me. So I hope this video really helped you out. I do have an ebook for sale as well. So if you're interested in learning some more about crafting and where to sell and how to sell and all that I have all that available there so I will leave that in the description down below so if you're interested in it please let me know happy crafting everyone